when a guy hits it big in software and then he sells his company to Microsoft for more than $100 million and then he decides that he wants to start making movies, there's a tendency to think, well, maybe here's another rich guy with a vanity project on his mind. Except that the movie that our next panelist made, his name is Charles Ferguson, it's a documentary on the U.S. experience in Iraq. It premiered last year and was almost universally reviewed as superb and serious and ultimately became a contender for an Oscar award. Though he did not oppose the invasion of Iraq initially, the title of his film tells you where he stands now very clearly. It is called No End in Sight. Charles Ferguson arguing tonight against the motion. Uh, thank you very much. I, I made this film actually uh, largely because of my heritage as a policy wonk before I made money. I got a doctorate in political science at MIT. My thesis advisor, uh, Carl Kazin, had been deputy national security advisor for President Kennedy. And he endeavored to uh, teach me to think rigorously about these matters. And I will leave it to you to see whether he succeeded to any measure. Um, he also had a wicked sense of humor, which I will uh, feebly attempt to imitate. If, uh, if the entire cast of Saturday Night Live had somehow gotten together with the Marx Brothers, the Three Stooges, and Charlie Chaplin, and they had tried in their wildest dreams to think up a catastrophe of a war, they could not possibly have come remotely close to what the Bush administration did in Iraq. And I will endeavor to demonstrate that uh, in the remaining time of my remarks, and damage on that scale uh, is not repaired with a surge. It is not repaired over a short time. This is something that that nation and that and the United States and the world are going to be recovering from for decades. And if you think that we're winning the war in Iraq in any meaningful sense now, then I invite you to wait a few weeks uh, when the Dow is down to about 2,000 and Henry Paulson stands on the rubble of the American financial system and declares victory when the bleeding has stopped, that would be a roughly comparable, and I'm sure that will happen soon, uh, that would be a, a roughly comparable kind of event. Um, why was this war fought in, in the view of those who decided to fight it? Uh, I was an ambivalently, complicatedly, slightly favorable towards the war kind of person, or towards the idea of deposing Saddam. It was fought to remove the threat of WMD from uh, Iraq and also from the region, uh, to install a, a pro-Western democratic government, uh, to bring peace and freedom and liberty and security to the population of Iraq, and, and also to spread that to the entire Middle East. Um, it was also intended to assist the United States in bringing economic, diplomatic, and military pressure on Iran so that it would stop developing nuclear weapons. Uh, the administration predicted and sometimes said this publicly, believed it internally, uh, widely known, widely quoted, that uh, the cost of the war might reach $50 billion and that U.S. forces would probably be substantially withdrawn by September of 2003. So what happened? Not enough troops were, were used. Planning for the war began 60 days before the invasion. Planning for, excuse me, planning for the occupation began 60 days before the invasion. It was vastly inadequate. Looting destroyed the entire country, most of its infrastructure, 16 of 20 ministries, most important infrastructural objects, uh, power plants, etc., were destroyed by the looting. The looting went completely unchecked by U.S. forces. Ambassador Bremer, when appointed, before he had set foot in Iraq for the first time in his life, a man who had never served in the military, never overseen an occupation of any kind, uh, on May 9th, 2003, he decided that he was going to uh, issue a debathification order which lopped off and purged for life the top 50,000 uh, administrators and technocrats in Iraq. He then disbanded the Iraqi military, throwing half a million soldiers under the street, unemployed with no notice, who promptly formed the insurgency. Uh, 
Virtually nothing was done about the insurgency for quite a long time. Its existence was denied. Economic policy was placed in the hands of politically appointed ideologues. And what did we see as a result? Uh, 4,000 Americans dead so far, a trillion and a half dollars spent, 100,000 Americans wounded, twice the official number. Uh, the official number is vastly, uh, is a vast underestimate. And uh, an Iraq that is just destroyed. Of, of Iraq's 34,000 physicians, 2,000 were assassinated, uh, 20,000 left. 25% of the population of Iraq is either dead or is displaced internally or is external refugees, the equivalent of 60 million people in the United States having left the country. At the peak of the violence, several hundred people per day in Iraq were being kidnapped or killed. Okay, so, but what if Iraq now, I hear you say, has this country become a paradise? No, it is not. Violence is down. It's down roughly 75%. We don't know exactly how much. To some degree, a sense of normalcy is returning to the country. People are haltingly able to go to school, to go to work now in ways that they previously were not. But the infrastructure of the country remains destroyed. By most indicators, it remains below pre-war levels in matters such as water supply, sewage treatment, electricity, power generation. The country is enormously traumatized. It went from being uh, 55 or 60 percent Shia to now probably 80 percent Shia because the refugees are overwhelmingly Sunni. And it's a government which, a, a population and a government increasingly dominated, already thoroughly dominated by rather extremist, fundamentalist Islamic parties and beliefs. It's difficult to believe, but Iraq still, with, with the violence down 75%, Iraq is still a more dangerous place and a more hostile place and a worse place for most people than it was under Saddam Hussein. That is difficult to achieve, but we managed. In addition, we have enormously strengthened Iran, which is continuing to develop nuclear weapons, unchecked by the United States. The American military is debilitated and tied down in this country, unable to do anything about the rapidly worsening situation in Afghanistan and Pakistan. The military is exhausted. And as far as I know, those 4,000 Americans are still dead. Those half million Iraqis are still dead. And the situation remains, I fear, irretrievable. Thank you.